Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I just want to talk about some of the things that we, a nice change to the game, some quality of life changes, and just things that I think would fine tune the game into it being a more enjoyable experience for everyone. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So the first one I want to cover is the repairing system. I actually think the repair system is kind of flawed in in design. Whilst the uh, the premise there is actually a good cool idea, being able to repair stuff, the actual fact is you can't repair stuff that's only very slightly damaged, but stuff that's absolutely fucked up, you can repair no problem. I kind of want to see this flipped. Um, the way I think it would work better is if a, if an armor is destroyed or a face shield is destroyed, destroyed say, beyond 30% durability, and there's only 30% left, it's actually rubbish. You could put in a barter trade for every uh, trader to say you can recycle three for a brand new one or five for a brand new one. So there actually is a, still a purpose for that. But I think, um, for example, if you get a face shield damaged and it's got a bullet in it, but it's only lost one durability, but it's cracked right in the center, that should be repairable. Uh, that is the most annoying thing possible is you buy a new Alton uh, face shield, gets one bullet in the face, you've got... Uh, it's it's like forty nine out of fifty, but it's you can't repair it. Whereas that is nearly at a perfect face shield, but it's absolutely pointless. You can't use it. Then you have to either do a trade to make it so you can get another one, or you just straight up sell it and then buy another one. I think it should be flipped around. Very slightly damaged stuff should be able to get repaired. The closer it is to full when you repair it, should be the little uh, the least amount of penalty for repairing it. And then once it say gets down to around the fifty to thirty percent mark. The penalty is a lot more drastic to the point where at 30%, you can't even repair it and it's trash. And then you'd have to do, uh, say, a trade to trade three, or recycle really, recycle three trashed ones for a brand new one. I think that would be an actual, a, a better quality of life, particularly for the guys that are using Altons and, and any face shield all the time, because I'm sure I'm not the only one here getting one bullet with a face shield and going, you know, instantly like, well... I either need to take three or four more shots to this face shield to actually be able to repair it, um, or it's it's going to be trash and I have to sell it. The next one I think would be really nice to add to the game, or it's more of a quality of life, is put a timer on labs. Um, and this is on the completion of the raid, not from when you enter. Um, so the people that go into labs can't just say, oh, I need to stay in the labs half an hour, and then I can um, do another raid after it anyway. Uh, just to make it so there's more rotation through other maps. This will actually stop people just farming labs as well for their money and all that kind of stuff. I think this would really be beneficial for everyone. And I know I'm going to get flack for saying this, but that's, that's just how I feel. Um, the key cards are a great thing. It's a, it, and honestly, it's, it's an, a massive thing for a money sink to be in the game. If you need an example why this is the case, um, for every reset, we'll say on average of three hours, um, all 10,000 key cards are sold. That is 1.15 billion rubles that just gets dumped into the abyss which it means there's a money sink in the game making money more valuable now you've got to remember that's every three hours and if you do that eight times a day during the eight resets that is nine billion rubles that just gets disappeared out of the game this is where like ammunition and meds become a really good thing as well for money sinks and um it really does give more value for items in the game so I know people say, what What do you think about the key cards? They're great. They're actually really good for the game. Now I think you just take that step to that a little bit further and just stop it so people only, stop people from only going labs to give more emphasis on people going to other maps and give people more of a reason to just rotate through the other maps. The next one I would love to see is actually reducing the timers on maps to not being a left and right hand side and just being the one side. Now, people will go, but hang on a minute. That means everyone's going to be going night raids at the same time and stuff like that. I actually think that the easiest way to fix this is if there's five maps, um, say you put them on around a four-hour interval time difference for each map, and then so say two of the maps are on a nighttime cycle while the other two maps are on a daytime cycle, and then people will follow the maps kind of with the, the, the daytime. So, for example... Woods and customs could be daytime whilst, say, shoreline at interchange at night. And then, you know, four hours later or six hours later, they'll actually start rotating around. You could also add this in to make factory either a day and night time on the same cycle as well. I think factory could actually be really cool if there was, say, an evening and a morning. So there's like a dawn and dusk kind of uh, situation there. Making it really cool instead of having just a daytime and nighttime factory. The reason for this change, I think one, it helps keeps maps fully populated 
And on top of that, uh, will reduce the amount of late spawn. So the main reason why there's a late spawn is because a map didn't get completely filled. So for example, if, uh, let's say factory. Factory is the simplest one. There's six players max for factory. If factory only gets five people ready to load in at the same time, and they're still waiting for a fifth, a sixth to load in, and a minute and a half tick by, the map will just launch anyway. And then number player number six goes, oh, actually, there's a, there's a map that's not full yet. We'll join that map because it's up to a two minutes late and then bam you've got a person spawning up two minutes late on a map and this would be the same with like labs for example that's why now that since the key cards have been added you get a lot more late spawns on labs because lab maps aren't filling up the last thing i want to add to this point is the fact that not many people were doing night raids particularly with mvgs if say the night time was like almost a forced thing on some people say i really want to get my customs raid done with my um with my quest then i'll go hang on it's night time i might go do a night raid with an mvg i haven't really done many night raids of recent but when i was tr doing them more often there was no one really in those maps now yes i do play on australian servers and the, the server populations are lower but this is even when the game's thriving and most of the australian servers are full um so I think if there was more incentive to go nighttime, if there was the only one time to choose from, you would actually see a lot more night raids. And honestly, I don't know how much you guys have seen it, but when you actually get into a good battle at nighttime and there's some traces and flashes going off everywhere and grenades going off, it actually looks really sick. Now, the next one is um, dailies. I've written this down. Um, Nikita's in the past said that they want to add them, but for me, I feel like it's the easiest fix to people that might get in that limbo situation or that situation where they're just kind of like, I don't know really what to do today. Um, dailies could be as simple as you've got to get five PMC kills on a map. You could literally just start the dailies off like that. And that map rotation is um, randomized every day with a randomized reward. They could literally just go, these are the maps. These are the amount of PMC kills you got to get, and this is a random reward. And the rewards could be, say, something like a thick item case all the way down to, say, maybe a money case. And you just go, yep, cool. So if I go woods, get my five PMC kills, I've got myself a money case. Now, everyone would be on the same daily at the same time. And what this would actually give incentive to is people to go on maps for PvP action on maps that don't really have a lot of emphasis to go to. A perfect example is Woods. Most people only go to Woods to get their Mosin quest done, and they don't really care too much about, about it besides that. Now, hang on, if everyone had a quest to go on Woods to get PMC kills, uh, you, you'd have a lot of fun with this, and people would be going with their squads to try and get as many kills as they can. I think this would be a very simple fix and enjoying feature within the game that is, in my opinion, fairly simple to implement. It doesn't take a lot of thought. Coding side, that's not my, my bag. I don't know anything about that. I'm sure that it's not as simple as just say, tick box, add quest, go here. Um, but I think it'd be a really good quality of life and quality of enjoyment and feature within the game. This one's been brought, brought up a lot, and I, I, I don't know why there hasn't been something implemented yet, um, but all I want is to see scav on scav violence stopped. Right, if you spawn into a scav, you kill another scav, you should just be penalized. Simple. Change the timer that if... I, I don't even remember what the timer is for a scav. I don't do them that often, but when I do do them, I always die to another player scav. But the scav timer, say it's 10 minutes at the moment, I think it might be 15. You get... Uh, so you kill another scav, that timer now jumps to half an hour. Or if it's a second time in the same day, make it an, an hour. If it's a third time in the next, you know, 48 hours, make it a week. I don't really care. Let's just stop scav on scav violence. It's just wrong. All right. We're in a world that you're meant to be helping each other out, not, you know, turning cheeky breaky on each other. The next one I've got written down is actually, I don't know if this is already coming. Um, and I've just kind of stumbled on it just by the random thoughts that I have. But the new trader is meant to be having some sort of feature where it's going to involve lost insured items. Now, I play games like uh, Path of Exile and Diablo and other, and other games like that in the past. And there's always been some sort of little gamble feature. And I was thinking about how cool it would be if you just have a, a fixed amount of money. It doesn't really matter how much. Say it's 100000 or 150000 And you literally just get a random gun that was lost in a raid that wasn't insured. Now, this could be from someone who's a level 1 with his AKS 74U all the way up to, a, say, a SA-58 that that was never insured. And you would just say, for me, it'd be like, oh, 
I might just buy a random gun and we'll just use that for the next raid. I think it would bring a lot of fun. And you, I don't know how, how how easy and hard this would be to implement, but I think it would just be a fun thing to do. Um, and people could just blow some cash buying random guns through the, the gamble mechanic. And I think it would just be kind of cool. And, and most people like some sort of gambling function. All right, so the last point that I have is the disconnect penalty. Now, it's not a really pertinent thing that I see a lot of anymore, um, but I think if you actually either disconnect from the game or you blow yourself up with your own grenade, um, it should be a, there should be a penalty for it. Uh, this is to stop, say, people running to, say, a red key card and then just saying, oh, it's not there, disconnect, or getting there and blowing yourself up with the grenade. The idea behind it that I see is you actually have to either force yourself to go get killed by a scav or a player in order to die, but the real incentive is to actually finish the raid. Disconnect penalty, I think, personally, should be 10% of a level, right? At the lower levels, it might be a bit annoying. At the higher levels, you're just not going to do it. So for me, I think this would be a really good way to reduce the amount of people not uh, finishing a raid deliberately. At least they're going to have to go suicide on a scav or a PMC. Um, so at least, I don't know, maybe there's some sort of penalty behind it. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, reward behind it for the person that kills them, maybe because they get the extra, extra XP for the kill and the dog tag but overall it's just a way until we see what these off raid healing side of things is which i don't really know where that's going to go i think this would be a way to just help reduce people going to raid disconnect going to raid disconnect all right guys so this is me just getting out some of the points that i've been thinking about over the last pretty much a week and a half i've been taking these notes um some of the things that will probably be a little bit more controversial some of them will you know i'm sure will be mostly brought on with happy happy and larry days for everyone but overall um this is just my opinion it's not saying that any of these things are happening i just think it'd be a cool idea if some of them did or all of them did and uh, i think it would actually make the game more enjoyable for everyone so guys thanks for watching another video if you liked it give it a thumbs up subscribe for future content i do stream on twitch every single day of the week so go down the link below give me a follow over there if you got any tarkov questions feel free to hit me up on my live stream or down in the comments below and lastly I'll see you next time. Long ass fucking time ago in a town called Tuckerville There lived a humble PMC It was a bear through and through